increasing FPS in Minecraft 1.19. That's the goal in this video. Now, first things first, it is worth mentioning that we're going to be using Sodium in order to do this. Sodium is by far the best performance mod for Minecraft. It's installed using Fabric. So first things first, get the Fabric mod loader, then use the Fabric mod loader to add Sodium. Just add it to your mods folder after you've gotten the Fabric mod loader and you're good to go, right? Sodium is active. We've already done that. This tutorial hasn't been updated technically, but by the time you're watching this video, it will be. This will be 1.19.4 Sodium. Now, at this point, we've already done that. We have a Sodium installation here, but before we click play, let's go to the installations tab and hover over Sodium. By the way, you might need to check modded to make it show up, and then click the three dots and click edit. Now, from there, we can click more options, and we can add more RAM to Minecraft. By default, though, it's probably 2 gigabytes, 2G, right here at the beginning, XMX 2G, 2G, meaning you have 2 gigabytes dedicated to Minecraft. You can up this to 4 gigabytes without any worry uh, in most cases. As long as you have at least 8 gigabytes of RAM on your computer, most people do these days, you can update this to 4 without any issues. However, in some cases, you may actually want to update this to even 8 gigabytes of RAM. Only do that is if you have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM in your computer and you also are running mods. Modded Minecraft can be super resource intensive, so running eight or six gigabytes of RAM with it is not uncommon. However, if you're just running Sodium and that's it, four gigabytes of RAM is not only more than enough, it's a lot of ways overkill. That two gigabytes will be good in a lot of cases. But nonetheless, I'm gonna assume you actually don't have a great computer. Maybe you don't have a ton of RAM. You can only change this to XMX2G click save and now let's go ahead and launch up Minecraft with sodium oh it is also worth mentioning here that your resolution the lower this is the better right the lower this is 800 by 600 is going to give you the most FPS but you're playing Minecraft on a really small screen so you have to kind of battle that I'm gonna go with 1920 by 1080 mostly because that's just the easiest for you all to be able to see what I'm doing once we get in game so now let's go ahead and launch up Minecraft that's kind of the general rules of things to do before you launch Minecraft, and then the rest of the stuff we're gonna do to increase FPS is actually done in game. One thing I am curious about though, for those of you who are watching this video, pause the video and go get what your beginning FPS number is. Now for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into a single player world really quick and grab the beginning FPS number. Now in order to do this, you wanna hit F3 on your computer. If you don't have F3, hit the FN button on your computer and hit F3. Then the top left, we can see our FPS. Now for me, it's about 60, we'll go ahead and say 90 FPS, because that's the highest I saw it to get started here. But it's dropping, as you can see, even into the 40s, 60 FPS. So 90 FPS is generous for the FPS we're getting there. And that's just standing still. Let's go ahead and set up Sodium, and we're gonna see how much more FPS we can get. So let's go ahead and go into Options. And then before we go into Video Settings, go into Resource Packs. For this, I would recommend removing every resource pack except Fabric Mods. Everything else can be removed and added back later once you've got your FPS, you know, stabilized. A lot of times it's the resource pack that's making you lag, so by removing that, it can really improve things. Then, once you've done that, go into Video Settings. First things first, we're going to go ahead and set our render distance. I'm going to set mine to 12, however, the lower the better. And if you want it the max FPS, go down to 2. You can always raise this later. As a matter of fact, let's do that. Let's set this to two, and then in game we'll raise the render distance. Simulation distance, same thing. Turn that down to five. I actually turn that down to five quite often and usually leave it there, even if I'm running 12 render distance. It can affect different entities and things like that, but overall it does really boost performance. GUI scale, leave that where it's at or whatever you want. It doesn't really change anything. Full screen, V-Sync, leave both of those unchecked. And then max frame rate. Make sure this is turned all the way up so you can get unlimited FPS. There's no limit how many FPS you can get. If you can get over a thousand, it'll let you do it. View bobbing doesn't affect FPS, neither does attack indicator or autosave indicator. Quality settings. This is where things can really get serious. Go ahead and change graphics to fast, turn off clouds, turn weather to fast, and then go ahead and turn leaves to fast as well. Particles, we want to turn those to minimal. Smooth lighting, turn that off. Biome blend, turn that to zero. Entity distance, turn that to 50. Entity shadows, turn that off. Vignette is up to you, and mitmap levels, turn those to zero as well. So as you can see, that's what our settings look like. Basically, everything is turned to fast or off on this page, and then we can go ahead and click apply in the bottom right. This did save on general as well. It did, yes. Then we can go to the performance tab. Chunk updates. I would recommend somewhere in the middle here. Five, six, and your number may be different. 
Don't go all the way up. Don't go all the way down. Somewhere in the middle. I'm going to go a little bit below the middle here with about five. Always deferred chunk updates need to be turned on. Block face culling, turn on. Fog, turn on. Or fog occlusion, excuse me. Entity culling, turn on. And animate only visible textures, turned on. And then click apply. Then for advanced, we want to go ahead and make sure our chunk allocator is set to async. Use persistent mapping is turned on. CPU render limiter, same thing, go somewhere in the middle here. You know, three, four for me, but if you have less, that's fine. Just go in the middle, right? It might be one for you, but just go in the middle there and allow direct memory access. Turn that on. Click apply for those, and then now we can click done and go in game. It's not super hard to configure Sodium, which is one of the cool things about this versus Optifine. Be it Optifine does give you a lot more options. It looks bad though, right? Like it looks pretty bad. But if you couldn't play Minecraft at all before, you can probably play it now. And when I started, this is literally what I was running. I was running lowest render distance possible. But that didn't matter to me because I just wanted to play Minecraft. Nevertheless, go ahead and hit FN and F3 or F3 on your keyboard. We were at what? We said 90 FPS being generous standing still. Now we're at well over 800. What's great is we're also passing 900. I did see 1,000 FPS there for a second. And as we load in chunks, it's going to drop. But overall, very, very good. Huge improvements. Now, not only are we getting over 1,000 FPS, we can go in here and we can do things like, uh, you know, turn these render distance up to, uh, like I said, 12 is where I usually like to run it. I'm also going to make some other changes. Why not? We'll go into quality. We'll go ahead and change this to fancy. Change our leaves to fancy as well. And I don't care about particles. Turn smooth lighting on. Give it a little bit of biome blending. And turn on entity shadows. By clicking apply, coming back in game, suddenly Minecraft looks a lot better. And we're still getting well over 300, 500 FPS. All you need in Minecraft to be able to play, by the way, is just 60. 60 FPS is very playable. That's what we had before. I could have played Minecraft without sodium. But if I can get over 600 FPS, why wouldn't I? And why shouldn't you? So go check out Sodium, get this installed, and get the boost of FPS. For us, we went from 60 to nearly 1,000, 800, 900, to even with some, you know, decent render distance, smooth lighting, things like that, still getting well over 500 FPS. Let us know in the comment section down below what FPS you're getting after you set up Sodium, because I'm very curious. Hopefully, you've doubled, tripled, quadrupled your FPS as well. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more incredible content every single day of the week. My name is Nick, and I'm out. Peace.